Welcome into the Orlando Nation pregame show live from Boston, Sweet 16 edition. Brett Barons and Derek Piper here. Hey, man, we are in Boston TD Garden behind us. They got so many video restrictions, we had to come outside. It's been a rainy, dreadful day here uh, in Beantown, but we are excited for some basketball. UConn playing right now against San Diego State in a rematch of that national championship game from last year, and it is all Huskies 55-39 with about 12 minutes ago. But, Derek, our attention, our eyes are all on the Illini tonight. 909 scheduled tip. We will see if that happens or not. Maybe if this game continues to be a blowout, it will actually start on time. I'm not holding my breath on that. Late night, you just got some coffee, man. Yeah, man. You ready to go or what? You cannot rain on this parade. The first week 16 <laughs> in 19 years for the Illini. It's a yep. big-time environment in there. A lot of UConn fans, but uh, we've been seeing some orange and blue piling in. Iowa State as well. It's going to yes. be a, a late tip here. A lot of time to pregame, get rowdy. So uh, it's going to be big-time basketball, too. you got the number one offense in the country in the Illini. It's the number one defense in the country in Iowa State. So a really fascinating matchup. Obviously a lot on the line. And uh, the winner out of this pod is going to go to the Final Four. So uh, two more steps to go. This team is wanting bigger and better things than just, uh, hey, we made it to the Sweet 16. We checked the box and we're going right. to go home. And uh, we'll see tonight if they can further this journey. Man, the home of the Celtics and the Bruins and a whole lot of mm. other things throughout the years. This is a big time stage and the biggest moment for this program in nearly two decades. And Derek, they've seemingly built towards this, right? They have the number one offense in the country, according to Ken Palm, in efficiency. They're facing an Iowa State team that has the number one defense. Your first thoughts on how those two things clash or what? Yeah, it's, it's really fascinating in terms of what Iowa State wants to take away, what their strengths are. They turn you over at a super high rate. I think that will test Illinois, of course. Roster build wide does not have a point guard. Now they have the number one offense in the country. So sure. uh, I think Brad Underwood is winning the uh, I don't, I'm not worried about point guards battle, at least as of right now. But uh, there have been moments where Illinois road game at Penn State, uh, late game meltdown at Michigan State where turnovers have been an issue. So can Illinois take care of the ball, play through their offense uh, and then handle the fact that Iowa State I think is going to trap the heck out of the booty ball yeah. action with Marcus Damask. They do a great job of clogging up the lane, which we know Terrence Shannon downhill action is where he wants to go. So uh, I think that Illinois, though, with their pace, can they get out in transition? It's going to be important for them to get stops and then get out and run. So I, I don't think that one side is just decidingly going to dominate the other. I don't think Illinois is going to ring up 90 points. I don't think <laughs> Iowa State's going to hold them to 55 or 60. So uh, it's going to land somewhere in the middle. But uh, I am just thoroughly looking forward to how this thing plays out because both are, to steal a term from Brad Underwood, elite at what they do. It would be fitting because Brad Underwood says elite all the time. Maybe he doesn't say it as much as he used to. Right. Right? I'll give yeah. him that. Like he's kind of like toned back a little bit. <laughs> it would be fitting if this Illini team could be elite and get to the next round and be one of the top eight teams in the country for every time that Brad Underwood says elite. But you mentioned that defense. This Iowa State team has held seven opponents to less than 50 points this season. I mean, it truly is incredible of what they do. So how do they do that? And what do they do specifically that allows them to be that good on the defensive end, Derek? It's their athleticism. Uh, and then there's a team that bothers you, disrupts you. As soon as you cross half court, they're going to get into you with their ball pressure, uh, not allowing you to get comfortable in your offense, really just making you grind for everything you do offensively. So uh, they, they've got a guy in Taman Lipsy who's a first teamer uh, in the Big 12, all defensive team as well. He's top five in the country in steals. So he's going to uh, really be active on the ball, swatting at it. And, and making your ball handlers uncomfortable, but also they play really well in rotation. So help defense, uh, anticipating passing lanes, getting tips and, and steals. And that's really important for a team that doesn't score it all that well. They uh, can be subject to some offensive droughts. They need those turnovers to really jumpstart their offense. So uh, I think another thing when you look at their, their metrics, they do a great job of that number one, they're the number one team in the country in terms of rim opportunities. They don't let people go to the rim at all. So uh, part of that also is just the way that they collapse and gravitate towards the paint. They will give up open threes to take away drives to the lane. So uh, I think especially they, their bet essentially is that your supporting cast players won't hit enough of those shots to beat us. We'll take away your stars. We'll take away, like I said, booty ball. We'll take away Shannon as much as they can uh, in terms of collapsing his drive. So can Luke Goody hit enough threes? Can Quincy Garrier, can Coleman Hawkins? I think that's what you're looking for with Illinois tonight. Offensively, I think those are the players that will have those opportunities where I'm not saying that Shannon's going to go completely silent because, I mean, sure. he's the most dominant player in the country right now over the last month. I think that's even – including Zach Eady, just what he's putting up. But uh, I think him getting in transition is really important. But Iowa State, they get you in the half court, 
they just take away that lane, they turn you over, and they just make it a, a grind for 40 minutes. So if they're taking away shots at the rim or in transition or whatever, if that's what they're trying to force turnovers, can Illinois then take advantage of that, get to the foul line? I, we've seen them do that. Terrence has been great at the stripe so far, especially in the last month. Like, Do you see that as an opportunity where Illinois could then kind of play into their game a little bit and say, okay, well, if you're going to do that, then we're just going to like continue to pound it. Good luck not fouling Terrence. No, that's a great point. It's going to be really interesting to see, especially early on, how this game's officiated. I know that's usually, one, yep. uh, and look, fans like to maybe focus on officiating more than we do in the media <laughs> at times. Not, no, no knock on them, uh, but it will be very interesting. Now, Courtney Green, a familiar face, he's one of the refs in this one. Uh, you wonder <laughs> if it is, sometimes in the postseason, the refs let it go. Let, let a lot of yeah. things go, want the players to decide the, the outcome. Although, traditionally, in the second half, things do tighten up. So, uh, I wonder when Terrence, because there's going to be times you can drive into the teeth of that defense, make the ref, make a call. It, it's hard to beat Terrence to a spot, square yeah. him up. So I think that it, as far as drawing charges on him, it's almost impossible, especially with the new rule. So uh, if he's getting those calls, that's great news for Illinois. But on the other side of it, as far as physicality goes, if they're going to let some things go, Iowa State really is going to rake at the at the ball, maybe catch a wrist, but also the ball trickles sure. out. Uh, if they're going to let that stuff go, that could be bad news for Illinois. But uh, I'll go back to transition because I think when Terrence is in the open court, you have no choice but to foul him or just to let him score. So Illinois yeah. getting stops, getting him the ball early, and allowing him to streak down the court before that defense gets set, I think that's really where you'll have those free throw opportunities or just flat-out dunks at the rim. Right, that's what I was saying. Like, okay, they want to force – turnovers they want to be handsy i want to see then like you said how do the refs officiate yeah. this let that kind of dictate what style you play and i do feel like this team has gotten better over the last month six to eight weeks especially of ball control right like i feel like they struggled with that a little bit just like they struggled with free throws i think about this the other day remember we had conversations the first couple of weeks of the season when this team was shooting sub 60 percent from the free throw line and we were asking ourselves like hey this is this a bad free throw shooting team Again, because they were terrible last year. They were, year. but they've come a long way in that. I feel like that ball control is, has come a long way. So what's a susceptible number tonight, do you feel like? And Brad even mentioned it yesterday. They're going to turn it over a little bit. Less than 15? Like, is, is Where's your sweet spot in that, Derek, where you feel like, okay, as long as they stay under this number, they'll be okay? I think you can survive 10 to, to even 12. Okay. Uh, if you get up close to 15, obviously anything beyond that is gonna is, is going to be worrisome. But, uh, of course, a coach is always going to want – eight turnovers or thereabouts, uh, I think especially against a team that wants to turn you over. But uh, sometimes that's a little bit unrealistic. I think it. Brad mentioned it yesterday, the type of turnovers that it is, uh, the live ball turnovers, the pick sixes, the easy runouts for Iowa State where it's not only a turnover and a giveaway on your end, it's an easy score for Iowa State on the other end. Uh, you can maybe stomach a little bit more a pass that sails out of bounds or uh, a travel here if you're in a trap. Again, I'm not saying that – You'll, you'll be happy with turnovers. Right. Brad's not going to put a smile on his face like, yeah, great turnover, guys. But uh, it is those that, that lead to uh, breaks for Iowa State. But, yeah, as far as the number goes, I'd want it 10 to 12 realistically as far as it, – it's, it's a strength for Iowa State. I'm expecting the Illinois will want high possessions uh, in terms of the, just the pace and tempo. So uh, 10 to 12 turnovers and then uh, get your shots on the rim and uh, three-pointers. And I think Illinois would probably be in, a, in, in decent shape. Depending on their defense, they're going to have to get stops too. Right, and I think that defense is something that maybe they can ratchet up a little bit here, right? We've seen that at times, and there's other games, uh, like in the Big Ten title game with Wisconsin, it's just a shootout, so, <laughs> yeah. so who knows. Do you feel like that if this game does turn into a shootout, Iowa State has enough offense to kind of keep up with Illinois? Let's say the game flips that way, and all of a sudden it, we're in the 70s with three to four minutes left. Like, can, can this game get to an 80s game, and does Iowa State have those kind of threats? I think it's possible. They got good guard play. I mentioned Taman Lips. He's a guy that it, ball screens can really break you down and, and set the table for them. Uh, Three-headed monster, really, in the backcourt. Curtis Jones off the bench is a good scorer as a guard that will penetrate. Uh, and Keyshawn Gilbert, too, is their leading scorer, athlete that's from St. Louis, six foot four. Uh, I think it's going to be really interesting. I think that Shannon probably will take the Lipsy assignment. And then beyond that, because, uh, look, Shannon's been a – bona fide lockdown defender, I think, yeah. especially the last month or so. Uh, beyond him, Ty Rogers, Justin Harmon, Marcus DeMass, Luke Goody, other guys guarding on the perimeter. Can they cut off driving lanes, make sure that Iowa State's not getting to the rim? Because that's something that uh, has been an issue at times. Other guards have been able to hurt Illinois, especially the assignment that goes beyond Terrence Shannon. So uh, another thing that Illinois is really going to have to lock in on is defensive rebounding because Iowa State, while they don't, they're not the prettiest shot-making team out there, they're really tough and physical. They go to the glass the last second chance opportunities. They have an athletic front court. 
uh, that's really going to try to get those second and third cracks at it uh, on possession. So uh, I do think that if Illinois has one of those games defensively where they're not locked in, where they're a little too lackadaisical, where other guys outside of Terrence are getting burned, that Iowa State could score upper 70s, maybe even into 80. But um, I, I do think on the whole, Illinois' defense has been better this month uh, for the most part. I thought Wisconsin just – flat out play well. I didn't think it was sure. Illinois being terrible defensively. Uh, they've had their moments. Uh, I think the Nebraska first half where they gave 51. Yeah, that uh, wasn't good. They, they've had <laughs> stretches where they've had too many breakdowns. You'd like to see a, a, a better, just a, less of a leaky defense. But for the most part, I think that their intensity, uh, especially on the ball and just overall focus at the defensive end has been pretty good. I think they'll bring the energy tonight. Yeah, and they did correct that in the second half against Nebraska. I right. mean, that shows that like, it is possible. But I do wonder in moments like this, and we were talking uh, about this earlier. Iowa State's pretty young, right? Like they they got some youth in there. Where I feel like Illinois' experience, its maturity. You know, you're starting that many seniors. Maybe that plays into this as well. Uh, Lipsy doesn't have a ton of experience, right? He's Sophomore. like in his first true ride here as like the team leader, right? Is yeah. the team's go-to yeah. guy uh, in in the backcourt. They have they play another freshman, I believe. Right? Milan Momsilovic. Dude, I was trying to figure out. How, okay, uh, can, you, we're not going to try and spell it. But how much did you practice that? I, I, I've been practicing. Okay, yeah. one more time. M O M C I L O V I C. Oh, we even can spell it here. Milan wow. Momsilovic. Momsilovic. Okay. Yeah. All right, that's pretty good. Six foot eight, skilled forward, put up double figures and four straight from them. Good shooter. So, okay, so you could spell it because you normally you just have to write it. That's right. I guess on the podcast you have to say it, but you know here visual. We're all about you. Got to say it, Derek. So, uh, Momsilovich. Momsilovich. Okay. All right. We'll uh, we'll take a look out for that guy as well. I'm looking at that maturity and experience for the Illini to uh, to play a big part into that. All right. Andy Olson's here. He just shows us an upset. Clemson beats Arizona 77-72. How about the Tigers, man? Mm. Wow. Taking down Arizona, the Wildcats. Two seed Arizona team. Yeah. Going down. They've had some good teams. They just haven't gone on deep runs with Tommy Lloyd. Like yeah. Even that squad that came to Champaign a few years ago, had Benedict Matherin and some of those guys that were one seed that year, got beat in the Sweet 16. So They got uh, bounced last year early, I think, yeah. too, right? So Princeton, Princeton in the first round. in that first round where they have 15, 2 15, two I think it was. 15, yeah. So second straight year, two seed, although they made it to the Sweet 16 yeah, you this year. That. Uh, yeah, I, th I think that's okay. Uh, but, uh, wow, okay, an upset there. That's the UNC game late, right, Andy? Yep, so we got UNC, the one seed in the West. Uh, Playing Bama playing Bama in that late game tonight. So Clemson already uh, punching its ticket to the Elite Eight. How about that? Uh, we got an update on inside. Andy will get that for us. He's behind the camera here. Uh, but we were saying that maturity. Like, I think that's going to be a big part of, of what this game uh, plays out to be. Maybe in that second half, too. 66-45. Uh, UConn is a juggernaut. 649 left to play. Um, Huskies are pretty good, man. <laughs> like both ends they're a machine yeah top 10 in both offensive and defensive efficiency second time getting a chance to see them up close caught that second half of the jimmy B classic when yep. they were playing north carolina uh they're a treat to watch and it's really impressive what danny hurley's done because they lost a lot of those pieces from last yeah. year going to the portal camp spencer great shooter alex caravan a really good shooter as well clinging a highly thought of prospect inside at seven foot two so uh san diego state held, held in there in the first half they took a, a good punch in the mouth sure, and sure. that UConn crowd I'm telling you man it was loud man I, it, it was really getting really after loud. it and, and felt like a home game for them but obviously the Huskies taking care of business in the second half and the lineup fans want to be that team squaring yeah. off with that home that home crowd here on uh, Saturday and I look at it is if you get past tonight if you're Illinois take your shot man defending national champs you never know what's going to happen the interesting thing to me and you know this better than I getting a better uh, look at UConn it's all threes or it's at the rim. I mean, there's very little mid-range shots in there. They're just taking threes, and a lot of times they're making them. So if that is the case, I think you got to hope UConn's missing threes mm -hmm. on a night if you're going to beat them because, uh, man, they are a, just a load, right? Yeah, and they run great stuff offensively. They're sets. They come off screens and a lot of confident shooters and uh, just a well-oiled machine that they have. Offensively and the defensively, that seven foot two presence around the basket uh, is definitely a, a big asset for them. But uh, would love to be here on Saturday breaking that thing down and, right. and have another game to watch. But uh, whoever wins this is going to have a really tough challenge on their hands. But there's no doubt. I mean, getting to the Elite Eight would be just a huge, monumental accomplishment for Illinois as a program and yep. and this and this team. And then of course, just tip it up and see see if you can go to Phoenix. Right. I mean, like if you get to that point, I feel like the pressure is more on today in my eyes because yeah. like you want to get to that Elite Eight. Certainly, you want to make it to the Final Four. But like 
especially playing the defending national champs, a team that's going to be 34-3 and three now, I believe, in UConn. You just go out and, and I don't think you have the pressure there if you're Illinois, if that's the case on a Saturday. I, I think it's all on UConn because they're trying to get back and, and punch those consecutive tickets. I don't know. That's just how I do it. I don't know if it's any different there. But, like, yeah. I feel like today is more of the pressure. Like, can you extend it and get to Saturday and then just toss it up and see? Yeah, I 100% agree. I do think also just kind of the way we'll remember this season, if Illinois falls short here, again, you, you break a 19-year streak. Absolutely and agreed. It's a big deal, yep. but you did beat an 11 seed and a 14 seed to get here. I'm not trying to, to downplay it, but, no, but those are the, just facts of what it is. The narrative would be that this was a good – Really good Illinois team that never beat a great team. Yeah. Like they lost to Marquette. They lost to Tennessee. They lost to Purdue twice. Would have lost to an Iowa State team. It's a two seed. So getting those chances against the the top tier of college basketball, right. they would have fallen short and really went over. It was a nice win in the, the Big Ten tournament title game against Wisconsin. But uh, that would be something that would hang over this season and leave kind of an unsatisfying feeling at the end if you do fall short here tonight. Yeah, I feel like outside of the Big Ten there, you didn't get much. Right. Right? I right. mean, last year, even think about the other Texas game. Right. Yep. And like UCLA, you had the UCLA game, which I don't know how good UCLA was at the end, but like, you know, they were there. Right. And at the time, that's those all we could base it on. Like so those, were, net teams. those were two quad one A wins. Right. I yeah. feel like at that point and that held. Yeah, we well, I think that might have been the only thing that held. it was the season. only thing like, holding up there. Like getting them in. Tournament as a resume, seed, right? yeah. uh, you don't have that quad one A win this season. And tonight would be that first opportunity. And for me, if that's going to happen, uh, you're going to have to get some complimentary pieces there. Terrence has carried them. Unbelievable here. Sets the single-season scoring record. He's having one of, if not the best, Illini single season in program history. But for me, it's like, okay, what does Quincy Garrier do tonight? What does Coleman Hawkins do tonight? Can you get some of those other guys to get going? I feel like they're going to need that if we're going to win. No doubt. Quincy's a huge X factor. He talked about it right after the game there in Omaha, that this is a matchup with Iowa State's physicality, the way they rebound. It's just profiles as a game that he needs to step up in yeah. on the glass. And then the shot-making component where he's been able to, to get that three ball rolling here yeah. uh, over the last few weeks. And uh, I feel like he's someone that they'll probably leave on the perimeter when they help into the lane and, and you kick that out uh, to the opposite corner or wing. And I think if he can make those shots, that would be obviously huge. Coleman Hawkins is somebody, too, that – uh, as they dial up the pressure and put their primary best defenders on Terrence Shannon, on Marcus Damascus, I think Coleman can maybe alleviate some of the playmaking, ball handling at times. We know Coleman can be a little bit of a wild card with, with his decision making and sometimes tries to do too much or is a little loose with the ball. I just think that he is somebody that if he's solid tonight, and obviously we saw it against Duquesne, him making, I think, three threes in the first half, yeah, he could be a game changer for that offense and, and stretch the floor and whatnot. If he struggles, Obviously, that puts more on Terrence's plate. And uh, with an elite defense, number one in the country, you need those supporting cast members to to take that pressure off. And, right. and if they make threes, I feel like that will open up the lane. That'll, that'll make Iowa State probably think twice about just really doubling down on Terrence. And it goes hand in hand with uh, him having a, a successful night if those other guys get going early. Sure. Brad wants more threes. Seems like we hear that all the time. What's a good number of threes then tonight? Obviously, we don't know the transition pace, how it's going to be officiated. But, like, if Illinois shoots 25 threes yeah. tonight, would that surprise you? No, I think that's that's a fine number. I know that you probably don't want the Nebraska game. Nebraska, not as good of a defense, obviously, obviously. but very uh, stylistically trying to do the same things. They want to force you into threes, force you into jump shots, collapse in the lane. Illinois in that semifinal at the Big Ten tournament, I think they took 22, 23 threes in the first half. So, like, there is a fine line of settling too much falling in love with the three a little bit too much. Maybe you do press the issue and see, you know, getting the lane and see if they'll call fouls on Iowa City. Instead of just saying, okay, they're going to pack that thing. They want us to take threes. We'll take threes. If you don't make them, obviously, you're in, you're in a tough spot here. So uh, I think 25, bordering on 30, of course, like you said, depending on pace and whatnot, uh, would be a fine number. Anything probably above that, especially if you're not making double digits. That's one key stat, though. When I was looking at high major teams against Iowa State, when you make double digit threes, they're one and four. When you don't, if you're a high major team, they're 18 and three. So wow. uh, if you can yeah. get to that 10 mark for threes, uh, and then obviously, as we know, with Terrence's free throw rate, his, sure. his downhill, then I think you score enough to be able to to beat them. I just know a lot of fans a lot of times bemoan the fact of like, man, they're just shooting a ton of threes. But Brad loves it. Yeah. In, in certain situations, he's all for it. We've heard him say multiple times this year, he wish they would have taken more. Uh, in that scenario. If they're quality in rhythm shot, like Luke Goody's shooting it really well here yeah. late. I think I mentioned Coleman, 
Quincy, those guys like catch and shoot in rhythm. I'm 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 living with those if I'm Illinois. Now Justin Harmon hasn't made one in what seems like forever. It'd be great if he could step up. Maybe if he doesn't, then Dre gives Lawhorn who hits some threes there and in Omaha, maybe he comes yeah, in and makes, he a couple, makes he's a couple. confident, man. Like he yeah. doesn't hold back, that's for sure. So I, I think that those are shots that obviously you can live with. But yeah, you don't you, you don't want to settle too much. You do want to get into your actions, you want to get downhill. Um and, and Dane's another guy. I think that's gonna be really fascinating. Yeah. Although they do double the post, can he make an impact, even if it's just not even straight up post touches, but offensive rebounds, drives and dump offs when their their defense kind of collapses on the on the ball handler. Uh he's been playing really good basketball and can he continue this run? I think he could be an X factor tonight. He too. hasn't missed a shot in three games. Unbelievable! It's it's really crazy. He's tied a program record for consecutive field goals made. Goes back to the '80s. Uh, how do you factor him into this? Because Brad said that they need Dane to play well. He has played well. So what is his impact tonight against the Iowa State squad? I think he can play in this one. I think it's from a matchup standpoint. Iowa State doesn't have like stretch bigs that will really kill you with threes. Uh, and then with Momsilovich, six foot eight, maybe it's better to have Coleman on him versus guarding one of those post players. And I think Dane has really elevated Illinois' defense at the rim uh, and is just more comfortable playing drop coverage than Coleman is. Uh, I think that the way that Dane's run the floor here recently has really been encouraging. So maybe some of those quick hitters in transition, quick post ups, or just knife down the lane when Shannon has the ball. So, uh, and then I've talked a lot about the rebounding battle. Dane being out there can be someone that racks up, yeah. you know, five, six, seven rebounds in a hurry and maybe keeping Iowa State, those athletic bigs, off the glass. So I want to see Dane out there. Maybe it's a game where he starts getting trapped and he's turning the ball over, and, and that could be something that you wonder about. But uh, I do think that the way he's playing with his confidence, his energy, he needs to get his time, and, and Brad obviously knows that too. And it's been in transition too, man. Like, yeah, it's not just like him backing down early in the season, dribbling a ball off his foot, like – where he's thinking too much, he's been out in transition and running, and I think that could play into this as well if Iowa State tries to speed it up and, and tries to get Illinois you know, in some traps and situations where they're trying to get a turnover. No doubt. Yeah, that's been just his activity. He's right. played with a lot of energy. Uh, I know that I was talking to Jeff Alexander, the big man coach. He's like, man, he's fresh. He should be fresh. He hasn't played a ton of minutes. <laughs> he's played 22 minutes a game in the Big Ten last year. This year was about eight, so uh, he's been raring to go. Uh, he's hungry and uh, excited to see if he can show more. All right, this game uh, preceding the Illinois game, 73 to 48, 354 left inside here behind us at TD Garden. So UConn is going to advance, uh, and the winner of this Illinois Iowa State game will see them Saturday. That time, TBD, we will learn that later tonight when the networks announce uh, when that will be. All right, man, we still got uh, what? 45 minutes before tip-off. We've been waiting all day, man. It has been a long wait here for uh, Illini Nation to get to this point tonight. And maybe with only less than four minutes left, there's a chance this tips off at 9 or 9, but I, I don't think that's going to happen. I, I think we're probably pushing 9.30 Central Time, which is 10.30 our time here. It is going to be a late night on the East Coast for Illini fans. All right. That's why you're drinking coffee at 9, you just 9 had o'clock one. at night. I know. That's what I'm saying. Daddy Derek here. Get with uh, you me. Got, you got to get. I'm trying to get on your level, man. Yeah. I'm just asking the question: How many diet cokes can you drink in one day? You know, um, I haven't gone to the coffee yet. Thought I, I might not be a, uh, be able to go to bed at, until three or four a.m., which it might be that late. We'll, we'll be up there. Yeah, anyway. I think yeah. that's probably about where it's going to be uh, for us here in Boston. All right, uh, three keys and a pick. What do you got on the sites? We'll get a prediction here in a moment. I think we both are pretty similar here. It's going to mm -hmm. be a close game. I, I'm thinking this is no more than a two possession like five-point game max, right? Yeah, I'm right there with you. Uh, do have three keys and a pick on the side, full breakdown on the matchup. Uh, we've been turning out a lot of content here. Uh, Joey Wagner has done a great job. He wrote a notebook, including Sincere Harris kind of being that scout team guy to really yeah. dial up the pressure. Uh, I know that Jeremy wrote about Terrence Shannon and talked to Tim Anderson about his development, his NBA prospects, and, and obviously just kind of the the maturation process and the mentality that he's had here. Obviously, there's, there's a lot going on outside the basketball lines for him. But um, in, in terms of the matchup, I do think it's going to be a very tight battle. Uh, I think we'll we'll have moments where the defense will get the boast of Illinois and, and be able to turn them over. But also Illinois, I think, with their firepower is going to show at times tonight. It's, it's just hard to bet against Terrence right now with the way he's playing. Right. So uh, I'm going to line I 79-75. I think Iowa State keeps Ooh, them okay. under 80. But not enough, not enough stops in there for uh, just a machine offensively. And I think that we do have a game to see here on Saturday. Andy and I were talking maybe first to 70 wins. Yeah. I, I would not be surprised if that's the case. I'm going to go a little bit lower than that. 
a lot of people asking, are they going to get it done tonight? I think Illinois does win this game tonight. I don't know how UConn would go on on Saturday, but I, I do think Illinois has the better roster. And I know, Derek, that they have the better player in Terrence Shannon Jr. He is better than Taman Lipsy or anybody else mm -hmm. on this Iowa State squad. Marcus but, Damascus is probably the second best player on the court. I, I wouldn't disagree with that, but that doesn't necessarily guarantee a win. Of course. And so can they get it done? Yes. Do I think they will get it done? I do. I think it's going to be a little bit lower scoring, though. I'm going to take 74-72. Okay. Illinois is going to advance. Ooh. And we it's going to be, be a late night sweat for people out there. A couple of nights, right? How many Illini fans will wake up? Okay, let's start with this. How many Illini fans don't even try? They're just going to bed. They'll see Oh, that. how could you do that? Okay, so if that's not the case, how many Illini fans are on the couch asleep? They wake up at some point at the <laughs> under four in the second half. Like, what did I miss? I could see that. Especially. I think that might be uh, also the case in there. Or you got the diehards that are just like, hey, I'm, I'm calling off work tomorrow. They could play this game at 3 in the morning. And they're, Sweet they're, 16, I'm ready, ready to, to roll. Go. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I, I could see that uh, a lot as well. Don't All wake the kids up with the screaming, though. You know, those those kids got to go to bed. See, I'm going right. to talk, but, you know, it's easy for me to say with my kids yeah, back here, home. In, uh, right? we got to keep it, keep it uh, <laughs> civil on press row. Um, but it was loud in there earlier. We'll see how many UConn fans stick around here uh, already getting late on the East Coast. And, uh, you know, maybe they're – I don't know which way they'd be rooting if you're UConn. It's tough. It's a lot it's more even question. matchup yeah. than the than the um, one five that UConn and San Diego State was here. All right, we've got all this, Derek. We've also got the portal, right, dude? Yeah, like crazy. It's AJ Store, the Wisconsin standout in the portal. Uh, what are you hearing about a lot of these portal guys? And maybe more so, Derek. How is Illinois approaching this? They're playing a game today, and they're no different than all these other teams that still have to manage a game right now. The sixteen teams left. But, like, how are they going about this? It's tough. And I know Brad has shown some frustration with it a little bit in the, the interview process. But it's part of the job. It's part of the, the gig. And uh, the assistant coaches are all chipping in, doing their due diligence. You I mean, you already got – I don't even know what the number is. I think it's already over 1,000 people yeah, in the saw portal. way more than 1,000. Uh, so, yeah, A.J. Storr, Rockford native, former Illini commit, ended up decommitting once Chen Coleman, former assistant, then went with Orlando Otigua to Kentucky. But uh, Illinois is going to make a lot of sense and as far as the fit, coming back close to home, what they did with a, a bigger guard wing type, both with Aodosumu and Terrence Shannon Jr. as far as development yeah. and getting him ready for the pros. So uh, I think that Illinois is, is one of the obvious choices for him. I, I'm not saying the, the only one. I think, I think he's going to have some suitors. Kentucky's another yeah. one. Uh, Kansas, I already saw a report that Kansas is, is interested in him. So uh, he's definitely a big fish. He's, he's probably the top player in the portal right now as it stands today. Portal is, is ever evolving. As soon as some teams get knocked out in the Sweet 16, it reminds me Terrence Shannon's Texas Tech team lost. And I think 48 hours later or less, he was in the portal. So right, yeah. uh, we'll see what comes here in the coming days. But uh, I'll, I'll give you another name a native of Indianapolis shooter, Jake Davis from Mercer, is a guy that they like a lot. Okay. Uh, six foot seven shooter. Uh, he was a freshman this past year, had good numbers, maybe a, a longer term piece to come in make shots off the bench they're gonna have a lot of spots to fill sure uh, but he's one they've shown a pretty high level of interest in early and i, I think they are, are trending towards maybe locking that thing up staff earning their money here <laughs> trying to figure out the matchup against iowa state while also managing the portal a lot going on at the same time all right man you ready to go let's do it i'm We're hyped up we are the coffee excited. is in the veins i'm good man, to go. Man, we are uh, ready for tip off and I got a feeling this is going to be late, just like we had predicted it all along. It made no sense they even said 909, but uh, 79 50, 210 left in the first game here, UConn and San Diego State. So uh, they got 30 minutes. That means they would have had to have been done uh, in one minute if they're mm. going to start. So that's not going to happen. Nope. So uh, here we are. We're all at the mercy of the networks, which is why we're standing outside and not on the court <laughs> uh, allowed in here. All right, uh, Derek. It's been fun, man. It's been great. Let's do this again on Saturday. I want shall to. Shall we? Let's All right. It. Let's see what happens here uh, with Illinois playing tonight. Iowa State 909, which is not going to happen. Uh, let's just call it 930. Sure. I think 930 is more doable uh, central time back home. For Derek, I'm Brett. For Andy here on uh, camera as well tonight. Enjoy the game, everybody. TBS and True TV. You get to pick either or. I don't know which channel it is on either one. So uh, good luck figuring it out. You got and, a lot of time uh, to do so. Yeah, you do. Yep. Uh, get another coffee. Maybe you got a quick time for a little nap here, a little siesta before the game. Uh, enjoy it, everybody. We'll hope to see you again on Saturday. Have a great night.